I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah? I'm coach to coach representing. I'm going to say this is right as representing for Omar. You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that me, me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over air. Come subscribe, repost, and share. I am sure sports, one thing me sure about. When me say sure, that me, me not doubt. Come get your sports, get it over air. Come subscribe, repost, and share. Yeah, share. If me not sure, that me, me not say it. No who score, that me, me, me not say it. Never know no game play, that me, me, me not say it. If me never seen a game, me not know who play. For your sports news, better come over here, so. For your soccer news, then come over here, so. If you don't love sports, still come over here, for the day, don't you want to love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or Argentina with these crap of players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. Trick Nick Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? Made up of 18 Jamaican herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. All right, all right, all right. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Manningsman. For my friends in North America, I know many of you are an hour ahead. So for you, it is like 9 p.m. And this is a little bit late for you, but I guarantee you it will be worth your while. So make sure you're locked and loaded and you're ready to go for this massive one that we have tonight. It's going to be really, really big. So as usual, I want to get past some of the the things that we normally do, which is to encourage you as you come on to hit the like button, to subscribe and to share the content so others can get on. Listen, I am doing that right now, right? So I'm not asking you to do something that I don't do myself. There you go. Look, I'm looking for persons in my contact that I can send it to. And if you can do that, then more persons can get to watch this fantastic interview that we are going to have. All right. See? I am doing that. You don't have to send it to everyone, but you know the persons who probably like sport and they, they want to hear some good, 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 good sporting discussion and dialogue. I guarantee you that you will have it for this one. All right. Mr. Paul Tiga Davis, make sure you're watching this one. So too, Mr. Eric Rader Makers, make sure you're watching this one. All right. Make sure, all right, because this is I am sure sports. So we have with us. Well, before we get into uh interview, in, inviting or I guess on sorry, big up sure improvement. She's the four, first female to be on the platform tonight. As usual, she's early. Big up to Peso, the man from out west, Lulu over there in Houston. You understand me? Um, yep. Tyrone Williams, bless up yourself and good night. You under, understand me? All the people saying that man you dead, I don't care about that side. You understand me? I don't care about man you. You understand me? Um, yeah, it's up to them. It's their business. I, I, don't, I don't care about man you. Hush, hush, man you. Hush. You understand me? Don't ball to me. Hey, <laughs> some of these people are laughing at me the other day. You understand me when Arsenal lost, but you don't know. But tonight we're not here to discuss the EPL. We have um, a, a young man who plays in our 
local Premier League. And I mean, uh, I tell you what, I've seen just great improvement in his game. You can tell that he's a, a, a intelligent player, uses a lot of brain in his game. He's having a tremendous season. His club also is having a tremendous season. Um, Arnett Gardens, they are top the league and they have been on a very good run. And they're also, I believe, playing some of the best football and they have been one of the most consistent teams. Now, many of you may not have heard about him um, and, and all about him. You probably see him at Arnett and wonder, where was this player all along? Well, for those of you who don't know, he went to Howard University. Before that, he attended Woolmers. Yes, he attended Woolmers. He did not go to JC at any point. He went to Woolmers, and he had the privilege of playing in the Manning Cup final. His name is Joel Cunningham. I also want you to know that he has a sister who is involved in football, and she is in charge of a team called Royal Lake, I believe. So his family is involved in football. I see one of his teammates, you understand me? No, if you, his name is Marlon Martin, right? And if Marlon Martin is in here, at some point, Unseen Sports TV is going to be here. Unseen Sports TV support Marlon Martin. No matter what Marlon Martin does, you understand me? Big up Marlon in the building, the number eight, the CDM there at Arnett Gardens. But let's welcome um, Joel Cunningham to our uh, platform tonight. Joel, welcome, sir. Uh, good night, my niece. Thank you for inviting me. You are most welcome. It is indeed a great pleasure to have you join us tonight for this discussion. Thank you because I know you had training. We had an earlier time and you, 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 you scurried home to make sure that you were on. So really, really appreciate you taking the time off um, after training to be on the program. So thank you so much for coming on and being a part of the show. No problem. Yeah, man. All right. So I want you to begin by telling the people a little bit about Joel Cunningham. You know, let, let them know you. Um, like, like for me, I think it is your emergence at Arnett Gardens that got me familiar with your play. But, you know, I know you had been playing before that, so give the people a little background about your your earlier days in the sport of football and how you finally got to the place that you're at right now. All right, so for me, um, I started out playing with Wilma's boys. Um, from second form, I was playing for the Pepsi team. Started and go straight through under 16, played under 19, and also represented Portmore United at the youth level, under 15, under 17, under 20. Um, after that, I went to Howard University on a full scholarship, football scholarship, and then I was playing for DC United in the summer for each year, um, under 23s, and then I went to play in Iceland for a year. Um, on a break for a year and a half, and then I came to Arnett Gardens. That was a box story behind. Oh, oh man, this story is very fast. So let's begin. So you, when you started playing football, that big gun in second form? No, that was when I was playing competitive. I played that for San Diego Prep and Arden Prep before that. Okay, okay. So you played prep school football, and yeah. then you went to Wilmers. Wilmers. You actually, you, 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 they didn't buy you. No, they didn't buy me. I was a walk on. There were some quality players there. Like Demar yeah. Rose, uh, Jason Wright, those guys were there, but I was just a walk on. Oh, so De you went there and saw Demar Rose? No, he was a year after me. Jason Wright was a year before me. Okay, okay. So you, you went to Woolmers in a very fruitful time in terms of Woolmers. Yes, I did. Right? So, so you played um, Pepsi and Colts? Yes, I did. All right, tell me a little bit about the is, is which one come first? Um, Pepsi. Pepsi, and then and then Colts. Yeah, Pepsi. Um, who um, was on the Pepsi team, and how did the team do? Um, how did how well did the team do in Pepsi? So first form I didn't play, but um, second form I made the Pepsi team. I was playing with um, Demar Rose, Jair Hyde, uh, Corey Bennett, those guys. Um, Jordan James was also a quality player at the time. We went to. Second round, we lost to um, Jamaica College when Junior Flemings was playing at the time. Oh, okay. So that's that's in second form. Yes. Okay, and then 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 you you played Pepsi after that. Played under sixteen course. Under sixteen course after that. Yeah, okay, course. well, you still set up players. 
pretty much the same set of players. Jamar Rose and Jai Hai, they jumped to Manning Cup first, and then when they dropped out of Manning Cup, they went down to Coles and joined us. But okay. I didn't make that leap. I went to under 16. And, and you were playing as a centre back at that time? No, I was playing left back. I actually okay, started so... playing centre back in college. That was the first time I was introduced to centre back. Okay, all right. So you played, you played, you played Pepsi. You played Coles. How many years did you do in that? And did the team do any better? You got knocked out in the the second round in 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 in, in first and second from under fourteen. What did the, the team do? Seeing that you'd have kept some of the same players in under sixteen. In the under sixteen, we went to the finals and we lost. Um, and then in the second year, the under sixteen, we went to the semifinals and we lost. JC again. No, I believe it was Excelsior that we lost to in the final and then JC in the second, um, in the semi final. Okay. All right. And then did, did you transition to the Manning Cup team? Yes. In the um, fifth form, I went into Manning Cup. Okay. And, and when you went in, you were a starter in the Manning Cup team? No, I was on the bench in the Manning Cup team for the first year. Okay. Okay. In, in the first year? So that's fifth one because you'd have played three years of Manning Cup because you went to upper six. So that means you played, um, uh, fifth form. you played in fifth form, lower six, and upper six. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell us about the three years in Manning Cup, starting with the first year. So the first year, um, we went to the semifinals. We lost to Georges. I was on the bench. I played a few games. I'm still at left back and then lower six, I fought for my spot and I got into the starting 11. The team did a lot better. Um, we went to the finals of the Walker Cup and the Manning Cup and we lost the Manning Cup 3-2 to JC in extra time and we won the Walker Cup that year. Upper six. Okay. Um, so we... No, no, man. Tell me, about, tell me about that team. Who was on that um, winning Walker Cup team? And who did you play? Your brother, you forget it at the story. You just a run past the team. Them saying a oh, big accomplishment. Them there, you know. Big up, uh, Mr. Gerald Neal Jr. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was the same couple of players. Um, I think the, the core of the group was still Demar Rose, Jail Hyde. Um, Jason Wright had gone overseas uh, with a few trials because he was working with Phoenix, as you know. Um, but it was Demar Rose, Jail Hyde big names we had brought in a few players from kingston college um you know we had georgina james in when i was in fifth form when we went to the semi-final and when we went to the final lower six we had um kimani Ar um not kimani Arbo, sorry osborne um from kc we had jason greenland a few other kc players we had a good couple of players that coach bernard brother bernard he was oh, brought from kc with him he brought them from Harborview. The majority of them was playing for Harborview at the time. Okay. Yeah. And that team, that team actually went to the finals. Yeah, we only lost one game that year, and it was the the finals to, against JC. J JC. So who was the starting? Who was in goal? Tell me the starting eleven. Let me see. Let me see how good your memory is. In the goal was Dan Lee. Um, he was from Glenmuir High. In the back line, Renico Clark, Chavez Brooks, myself at left back. And Atkinson, I believe, was right back. In the central midfield, we had Jason Greenland, Demar Rose, um, at forward line, I think it was um, Jail Hyde, Corey Bennett, and I think Kim um, Osborne from KC. You miss a player, you miss a midfielder, you know. Yeah, Sorry for the man, we miss, you know. <laughs> Up there, you know, it was like uh, up there that we start all the time. So there is some other players that would be like in and out. That's okay, funny. okay, but that was a core starting team that, that you played. And the JC yeah. team that you played against in your last three two, um, yeah. who was the standout players on that JC team? You know, Junior Flemings was there. Um, Rafiki Bryan. Um, oh, okay. And those are the two that I really remember right now. How, how how did your team respond? I mean, losing to JC in the final. What was that experience like for you? I mean, it was it was heartbreaking, definitely heartbreaking. Were you expected to win. 
we actually were the favorites to win that year. Like I was saying, JC was doing well, but I think their last game for the second round, it came down to the last game and they were actually poised to lose that game. Not lose the game, but lose the group because somebody else was on the same points as them. And I think it was like a high scoring game that they won. Oh, that that was the season when the Eva goals were scored on that last day one over was it prison oval and a game was being played at Tansan Spring. Yes. And they had some fun. big scores. Ah yeah, that's so. how they got through. That was the year. So we were definitely the favorites that year based on our performances. So um they said we dropped the ball on that year. Okay. All right, cool. And um but but you also had upper six. Yeah. Did you keep majority of the squad for upper six? Yeah, some of the players returned, some didn't. Um, we also got new players as well. Um, but pretty much most of the players re- remained because we had a young group uh, for lower six. So we, and that was the first year of um, like a Lime Super Cup, I believe that's called. Right. I think now it's Flow Cup, I think. Um, so Champions Cup, I think they call it now. So we had played that first year. And we went to the semi-finals and lost to Holy Trinity. That was the year we really played charges twice and we really had good performances. We both beat them 3-0 twice. I think Jayad Hyde scored five, but it was six goals. So that was a good performance for us. Because, um, you know, as you said, Georges are our rival when we were playing at that time. Yeah. So how did... Oh, wow. So, all right. So, but so you didn't win anything in, in no, your final year, season? That year we didn't win anything. Okay, you got knocked out in the, by 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 Holy Trinity and, in uh, the Champions Cup. Oh, what happened in the Manning Cup and the and the and the, and the um the Manning Cup? We had lost to Charlie Smith, I believe, in the quarterfinal, and in the Walker Cup. That Charlie Smith team had Cephas on it, and Trevor and Test. That was was it that Charlie Smith team? I don't think Cephas. I don't remember. Was, I don't think Cephas was playing. I think he was maybe to McDonald. That was the name I remember okay. that year. Um, okay. I don't remember how the Walker Cup went. We had lost in the first round, though, I think. Okay, so you finished upper six. You, you did your keep, you did your C, your, your C second stuff. Um, did you did you plan on going to college? That Was that the original plan that, okay, once I get to upper six, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to look at offers. Did you how how did the whole Howard thing come up? Is it is is that where you wanted to go, or that was the best opportunity presented to you? And you grabbed it, or you're looking for professional footballing opportunities and it wasn't there, or it was listen, I am going to college and then I can come back to football. What was the decision like and how did you end up at Howard? Well, actually I wanted to leave from fifth form, my first year in Manning Cup. Um because I had, what happened was that my cousin, Michael Seaton, he had signed with DC United at 16 years old. And I think he was the youngest oh. signer in the entire history. So that kind of motivated me to say, all right, I need to get out of this environment and try to compete overseas. Um, I didn't have any connections in the professional realm besides MJ. Um, but I was saying, all right, that I, use, I have good grades. Maybe I can try and get into the college route and see what will happen there. So that's how I started looking for colleges. But at fifth form, you wouldn't look for um, four-year universities as much at the time. So what I was recommended, what was recommended to me to do SSAT and go to prep school, which is basically the two years. Yeah, um, junior college. Something like junior college, but it's not junior yeah. college. Um, so... That didn't work out for me for fifth form, so I came back, and that sort of motivated me when I went to lower six to try and compete for my starting spot. Um, and then I got the starting spot, played well, and then the opportunity for Howard University actually came in upper six uh, when uh, past past student of Walmart and past student of Howard, who, Dr. Asher, he's been coming to Walmart every camp and giving us the breakdown of the professional world and the difficulty of getting into a professional level and the realistic situation of maybe going to college through the college route, which I think a lot of schools should be getting anyway. I think a lot a lot of more schools should be saying, all right, let's teach them from maybe fourth, fifth form, because he was talking to every Manning Cup team. 
um, not just Wilmer's way he was talking to Norman Manley as well. I remember. Okay, so he he would come in and talk to the schools about how you can get into college, what you need to do, what yeah. you need to have. That was the kind of thing he was going around, and that's very good. Yeah. I think that's very. Yeah. Good. You are saying that you are saying that that should be done right throughout the, the the high school footballing system. I really think it should be done. Um, I think every school should have somebody doing that on a yearly basis to make on the make um students understand the situation that they're gonna face rather than just like finishing school and then not knowing where they want to go next. Sorry. Okay. Like... Yeah. So you, 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 you get to Howard. I mean, the opportunity came through. You went to Howard. Tell us about your time at Howard. And yeah, how, how did that go in your own estimation? Well, it was definitely a rocky road because especially for the football program, it was definitely a rebuilding program. Um, so the, Coach was trying to rebuild the team around the freshmen. So I was definitely one of the core players from the get-go. I actually ended up being the captain after two or three games in because the original captain in, had in a, your first year, in your first year you're in a freshman year you were the captain? Yeah, I was selected as captain after the original captain was injured and out for the rest of the season. It was myself. Uh, not, 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 not this not this person who said he played with you at our name, Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan was injured captain. Because <laughs> he said he was at Howard, you know. I don't know his current name, but he goes as Dr. Dan. He said both of you went to Howard together and you played at Howard together. All right? Um, I do that and orthopedic PT stuff he does. So I don't know if you know him. Oh, he said I was not. Oh, he was not the captain, but he was at Howard. But continue. Yes. Yeah, so... um. It was myself and another player, Xavier Rajpal, who was a transfer student. So we were both captains in our first year at Howard, even though he was a junior. And our team was competing, but I don't think we did anywhere near where we could have. Um, and then from the, that first year up to the fourth year, I was still the captain. And it was, it was still up and down. But I think for students going to college, it's definitely much more than just how well the team does. Um, it's also about how well you can network. Because unlike, and I would say Jamaica doesn't help you as much when it comes to network, but when you get to the States, it's a lot bigger. Like the, the vast pool of people you can reach out to. If definitely if you want to be a professional player, you can just be talking every week, every week, every week, just be connected with people. I think that's how the opportunity for DC United Under 23 came up with my head coach at the time, Philip Joe. Okay, so um, this is Gregory Simmons. I think he's a Howard man as well. He says, enough big Jamaican baller went to Howard. So there's, Howard has had many Jamaicans play um, over the years. And I mean, I think they have um, what they call him, Hall of Famers were Jamaicans. How about you? What kind of status did you, um, in terms of your football? I know you graduated, but what kind of status you left there? Are, will you be one day um, a Hall of Famer because of your performances over that year? Did the team accomplish anything in your, in your what, four years with them? Yeah. Um, we didn't perform at the standard where you can say I'll be a Hall of Famer. Definitely not. Um, but okay. the team is definitely something, like I said, it was a rebuilding year for the four years that I was there, and it's still rebuilding. But I'm hoping that the team can do better going forward. Okay. Are, were there any other Jamaicans on the team with you? Yeah, definitely. Um, my year when I came in, it was me, Joel Pagan, and Roger Tomlin. That was three of us came together on the same year. The next year, we got in Javon Garwood. Um, and there oh, are this is this is a Dr. Dan. My name Dr. Dan is Giovanni Garwood. See right here, he, he said, ask him about and him and him and him don't want the same name Garwood. See, he said, check spelling. Garwood. Can he play can he play football? Yeah, Garwood, big name Garwood. <laughs> he's actually from Wilmot as well, so we played together oh, yeah. up and everything. So okay. we've got each other for a while now. Yeah, so he can play a little. Yeah, a very good player. Very, very good. Not, not, not as good as you, though. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm not trying to play and I go like, you know, one of those players that you say, what if, you know, it's just real quality player and I go like, and the discipline level was definitely top notch. Definitely one so that you can um, emulate from and learn from when you, if you want to have a mentor. 
definitely a good player and a good person. Okay, okay. All right. So so that is that is the time. See, but but you said while at Howard, um, you also also got the opportunity to play for the DC United under twenty three. Yes, I did. So um, like I said, with the networking opportunity is definitely a lot more in the states. Um, yes. The coach at Howard University was a good friend with the DC United under three under twenty three head coach, and after my first year, he connected with him and recommended that I join the team and I got in that summer and it was a great experience. Like we played against some big teams. We actually played against Southampton when Van Dyke was still there. And I saw him and I was like, yeah, that's really a professional player. Like these guys are definitely some different. So you, you played against Van Dyke? Yes, I did at DC United Stadium. Yeah. You know what? Friendly in a friendly game? Yeah. In a friendly game. Ah. Wow, that that's that's cool. Um, Andre Ireland says he's still on the billboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's on the... yeah. So what? T- tell us so the, the DC United experience. You said was a good one. How long did you stay there? Just just for the summer. I stayed there in the summer. So it was a summer program. The under twenty threes. It's a little bit different from the academy because the academy plays throughout the year, from basically from August to straight back to May, like a professional season the under 23s was just the summer at the time so every summer i would go there and then i'll go back to howard during the year during the school year okay so why, why at any point you thought about transitioning to like a part of dc united probably the, the mls team or or that, yeah that I had, yeah go ahead. i definitely had that in my thought process um a little bit different at all at dc united was that the coaching staff was changing pretty much every two, three years at a time. So the relationship that I had with the coaches at the time, it just basically broke down with the new coaches. And I got a few opportunities to train with the MLS team and a few opportunities to train with Loudon, but it didn't um, pan out to anything. And I even got to train with Wayne Rooney and those guys a couple of times. So that was a good experience for me. Okay. Okay, cool. And so, so once you finish college, you graduated. What what do you have your degree in, if you don't mind? I have a master's and an undergrad in accounting. Okay, okay. So you run all the books at Arnett Gardens, man. It's very good. <laughs> I can, I can. <laughs> you can. I like that. You can. That no, that no video will. But um, so after after Howard, you said you also had the opportunity to, to play in Iceland. Yes, I did. Um, when I finished. My master's degree, I actually had a trial in Portugal, but the time when I wanted to do the trial, um, it was very close to finishing my degree, and I asked them if I could push it back to the summer, and that didn't work out, so that trial just went out the window. Um, and then when I went back to the same, I went to a combine, soccer visa, and I definitely think young players should definitely look into them, because they definitely give some real opportunities to players. So when I went to their went to their combine, um, I got the opportunity to try it with, at Portugal. Didn't work out for me, but then the second time I went, they got me the opportunity to go to Iceland. Actually, they got me a second opportunity with Portugal with a Portuguese team, but it was a trial, and then they okay. gave me the straight contract in Iceland, and I decided to take the straight contract instead. So in Iceland, you played in the top tier in Iceland. No, I played in the third tier in Iceland. Okay. What what was that like? Uh it was a good experience. I think the COVID it was in twenty twenty, so it was like prime COVID year. It was a bit challenging when it comes to the, the scheduling of games. We stopped our season a couple of times and the season actually finished prematurely, but definitely uh an experience I won't forget. Well, with the weather, you definitely have to be prepared for that mentally, I think. Um, because when I just came in, uh, I don't know if you guys know, but with certain countries, it's like most of it is daytime during the yes, summer. Day t- yes. yeah, it's a little bit of night. And then during the winter time, it's mostly nighttime, a little bit of day. So that's definitely something you have to prepare yourself for. Yeah, but because we just have two players, I think um, Dwayne Atkinson and Richard King have gone there. I mean, did you reach out to them to say, listen, I've been here before, you know, I hear that you're going here, 
kind of blah 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 be, be prepared for that or you don't kind of have that kind of relationship to be honest i don't have that relationship with them but if they do listen to this or i guess i can reach out because we have mutual friends i definitely think they definitely need to prepare for that yeah so it's gonna be okay. a challenge for them so, so you have had the experience of playing in iceland you have been in portugal you have been you have been uh, with DC United in the States, you have played college football, played high school football in Jamaica as well, and now you're playing Premier League football. I mean, how how would you describe the, the levels that the different places are at in terms of the, the the football itself? Well, when you compare football, I like to think of it as three aspects: your technical, your physical, and your mental side. So I think when it comes to technical skills, Jamaica does have, a, I guess, a competitive level. Although I haven't played with an MLS team or a first year Iceland team. I think the teams that I played with, I've seen some sparks um, in the JPL that can transition there on the technical side. Uh, physically, I think a few um, players could probably transition. But when I think the mental side of the game, is where we need to really get better at tactical stuff. Um, the, like I said, the mental toughness when it comes to things that don't go your way, those things you really have to get better at. So I think that's where we really need to get better. The mental side of the game. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. So so because you kind of really, you, you, when, it, when you came back into the JPL, I think last season, last season? Yeah, I came in mid-season, March, last year, March. Right. right. You kind of struggled to break into the team right um this season you are a a regular starter right, right. i mean what, what what i don't know if my assessment is right it looked like said no i'm gonna be breaking the team from a reach <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> yeah i i was on the bench for a few games but i wasn't uh an uh, bench player for most of that season once i came in i uh, put my stamp on the team i was a starting player um, okay. I don't think I was playing at the standard where I needed to be playing, or at least my standard at the yeah. time. I but this it. this season you have really played, you have really played well. I mean, what 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 has happened at Arnett Garden? You talk about the technical, the tactical, or the mental. Um, you talk about the physical. I mean, what is happening at, at Arnett? Why we are seeing this kind of play right now? I mean. On any given week, it could be Gerald Neal around there. They used to play Ajuma Johnson, I think, last season at left back. When you were a left back, you play, I think you played left back and you, you play center back. They have the two Simpsons as well who, who play there. Um, recently, like Purcell was playing a lot of games. He has been out and um, the former captain, uh, Guthrie, has played well. Arborn have been called up to the national team. You remove Eric Edwards and then Asha Hutchinson comes in and he starts uh, keeping well. So it seemed like Fabian Reed, the old star. What they call him again? What kind of blocks they call him? Blocks. Eh? Parker blocks. For the yeah, uh, dropping goals like whoa. Uh, then you have Mr. Um, I don't know himself, twist and turn, spin around, up and down, roll all around, demo <laughs> Yeah, that's not. Yeah, you have to tell me what trade it is like with demo you know, because that man, every time I watch that man, I have to laugh, you know. But, but before you get to that, <laughs> uh, talk to me about what, what, what has it been like being at Art Arnett Gardens and what, what, what has happened while the team is looking the way that it looks well, i think uh coach said it well even this morning in the team training i think the when it comes to the individual players even last season i think we had a good crop of players but now our team is really competitive and we're really playing like a team um as you said the number of players that played for us last year and they're all here it's like everybody wants to get that spot I think last game we're playing a Harbour View and we spoke to the guys after the game. Every single player on the bench wanted a few minutes. Like they wanted to get on the field. And that's how it is in training. When you come to our, if you come to our training sessions and see our squad game, the heat in the squad game, the competitive nature, I think that's what bringing the team to say when you go to the match day, I think it's a lot easier because everybody pushes each other. So I think that's the difference what you see now as opposed to what you maybe saw last year. 
Yeah. Well, what 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 you'd say about those people? Say what this man are doing in the league? You know, see a bush league this man. You did Iceland play. You come at Jamaica and play a very degree. Before you did a foreign. You play a waste. You a waste your talent. A waste. You a waste your talent, Joel. You be left them look at the league. I'm go play in a big league. What 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 do you say to them? Because a lot of people really, you know, they don't think highly of local players and they don't think highly of local football and and that is why i wanted to talk to you so people can know that they're i mean you're somebody with a master's you know um in accounting playing in our local leagues playing well you have had experience in iceland so what would you say to those people who say no their money no good you don't see the world and they go for it and they come back out of what what would you say to them to say ease up off the youth them and 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 he, and give them some perspective well i think um, similar to what you said, the players, I said earlier, the players' mental side has to be strong. I'm not going to say that the guys that go over there and come back, they don't have a strong mental side, but sometimes it's even the support system. Because when you go over there, if you're just on your own, it tends to be a lot more difficult. So I would say to those players that are those people that critique those players that come over or critique the league, maybe there's some other reason outside of football that's really holding these guys back. And maybe there's something that we can do on the outside that, to support these guys. Maybe it could even be a phone call, a message to say, hey, you're a good player. Don't drop your head down. It's like things can happen for a reason. For me, I know that COVID really put a big dent on my um, growth in Iceland to go over to the next level. But everybody will have their reasons to do things and reasons why things don't go your way. But how do you react to those things? So it's all about that. Yeah, and, and what would you say to the players? Players like Gerald Neal Jr., Marlon Martin, who, this is, what, what do you say about them? Because they will hear some of these things. You have like Kelson, a younger player coming in, Jaheim, younger players at your team as well, Asha Hutchinson. These are younger players that these things are being said, and they are going to hear some of them. Now, you're a little bit older. You, you, like I said, you, you, you have completed college and stuff how do you talk to them to keep them inspired and keep them encouraged to say forget the detractors and you, you know how do you motivate and encourage them um to forget about some of the things that are often time said well how i do it i mean i'm just very direct with that I when mean, i say hey just play ball you really chose this game because you love it so there's no point in you debating with somebody who might critique you because even when you go to the higher level, it's going to be a lot worse. You see at the professional level, all these guys chanting at these players who are getting millions of dollars. Like you come here to go that level to go to that level. So if you can't deal with it now where you're at right now, it's going to be a lot harder when you go over. So enjoy what you're doing now and block out any negativity. You can take critique because sometimes constructive criticism is good for you. Sometimes you have to just um, channel the good things out of the bad stuff that you've been hearing, but don't just say, all right, I'm going to react. Don't just get mad. Don't just go in your little shell. Play your football, enjoy yourself, because once everybody, especially at Arnett, as you've seen, once those guys express themselves, I don't think any team can beat us. Yeah, but all right, so what about the fans? I mean, what about the Jamaican fans in general and the Arnett Garden fans? I mean, um, people say that, yo, the Arnett Garden fans can deal with their players. But, you know, you understand me? What, what, what would you say? But at the same time, they probably support their players the most because yeah, that's they're it. normally trouble. So while, while people may criticize them for how they cost the players when they're not playing well, they turn up at the games and probably have the biggest support. So 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 go ahead and, and yeah. talk to me about that. Exactly what you said. I think those fans, they're... They really love their team and they have high expectations for us. I think that's what's really come down to. When you look at the higher level, when you look at Real Madrid, um, maybe Chelsea, like those teams have probably the biggest fan base. But when you do bad, they will come at you. They will really come at you and want everything to go fire the coach, fire the players. Like everything will come at you like that. But I think it's all about keeping that mental toughness, like I said from the start and playing a ball game because you will always have fans critique you. You'll always have coaches, even coaches come at you. But if you can't deal with it, then maybe this isn't the sport for you. Okay, so, so let me ask you, what about you? I mean, you you don't seem like somebody who argue and quarrel a lot and sing. you know, that is the demeanor that, that you, you move with. So 
do the fans give you a hard time as well? Or they yes, say, no, man. man. <laughs> no, man, I joined that, man. You see them, no. man, they are decent, cute, man. No, Boy, man. I, 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 hear, I hear it all the time. I mean, there, is, there have been games where, like, even for, like, two, three minutes, I made two, three mistakes, and you just start hearing expletive after expletive. And I just have to say, play through it. Even my teammates kind of, like, they realize that I go in a little slump. And they help me out. So it's not just me and my mental toughness. Sometimes it, my teammates help me out. And sometimes just give them a little thumbs up and move on. Because you just have to laugh off some of the things that they say. Mr. Mannings. Audio. Audio. I just lost my audio. You hearing me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. You hearing me? Yeah, 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 I, can yeah. Hear. I lost my audio for a sec. Okay. Yeah, man. All right. So so that's good. That's good to know. All right. All right. Um, and I like that because fans will be like that. So you have to sometimes forget about them because the same fans will will cry out and 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 uh, help um and support you and stuff. But your your family is like I said, Michael Seaton is your is your cousin. You, yeah. you, you have a sister who is it a sister that played for Jamaica, right? No. It's a cousin who played. You have, you have someone who plays for a female who played football. Female in relative are in charge of football or runs football. How does it go? I'm, uh, so Michael Seaton, mother and aunt, are both um, connected to the teams that we work with in Jamaica and Premier League, Royal Leagues. I think that's what you mean. Right, Especially, Royal Leagues. Right, yeah. right. So, okay. Kadish Fishley, she's the head coach at Royal Lake. She's my cousin. And Kamon Lee is her older sister who helps as well. She's with, the, with the team. So, yes. you're into you're, you're into managing. So, so, you're part of the management at Royal Lakes. Yeah, I also help out with the management and sometimes help with the coaching as well. So, how, how do you work with Royal Lakes, train at Arnett Gardens, and utilize your masters to earn income? To be honest... I don't use my masters enough, and I've been saying that a lot <laughs> by my parents and family members that I need to start. So using you're my playing masters. football full time? Yes, I play football full time, and then oh. when in my free time, I help with the management at Royal Lakes, and then I have a mentorship program that I'm trying to get um, more structured in a way that I can help players to basically go through the same route that I went through from high school to college, college to professional level. Okay, so 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 how do you how, how do you pay back for all that money your family invested in, in, in you to go to Howard? I mean aren't aren't are you taking care of your man? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, um my parents, my family members definitely did support me. Um but I also like I said I got a full scholarship and when I went to the States I did some work while I was there. And even after I graduated, I'd actually worked for PwC for a few months before I resigned to go up to Iceland. For people who don't know what PwC is, not is a public works company, a Price Waterhouse and Cooper, all right? Just yeah. <laughs> one of the big yeah. firms. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So why why aren't you doing accounting now? I'm I'm very sure that even even Arnett Gardens probably need an accountant. Um, I don't know. Maybe the, the, the JPL, um, those people who run the JPL need an accountant. Is, is it that work would take away from you um, playing the football? Um, yeah, or, I think or, that's my mindset yeah. right now. I want to fully commit to the game and see where it can take me. And then maybe along the lines, I'll decide that it's time to hang up the boots and start using my degree a little more. So I think that's the mindset. Okay. Okay, uh, all right. How, how old are you now, Joel? I'm 26. I'll be 27 in August. All right. So do do you do you, uh, yeah, man? That's how I know you're a great footballer. You know, cause you're born in August, man. I'm tell the people, that, man. If you want to be a great footballer, man, you know it, go, man. Which month do you think you send both born people? Same now, day. Same yeah, day. Man, day man, with the first the... August. Have the same birthday. Then I tell me, I tell them, man. When I think Marcus gave a born birth people, when, when I know I want to be great. Change in the birth month, people. August, I think. August, I think the people. <laughs> yeah, 
but um so so do do you do you still believe you have a, a shot at getting into the national team is that part of your goal or this is just arnett gardens that i'm focused on yeah well definitely it's a part of the goal if it does happen i'll be grateful but i do know that opportunities are slim right now um definitely we saw that the brought in a lot of local talent and i wasn't in that crop so it's not that I'm ruling it out, but I definitely want to focus on making sure that Arne Gardens get to the level that it needs to get to, and maybe to see if I can get an overseas professional contract again. Yeah, so when you say overseas, you're talking like in Europe, or you're talking like USL, MLS, or it doesn't matter, um, probably one of the, the other um, Central American countries like the Costa Rica. Um, where do you see, you know, at, at this stage, you're 26 now, where do you you see the pathway for you well i'd love for it to be mainland europe definitely love for it to be there um but i definitely look at all the angles that can happen right now and see where that i can go um if it does happen to be usl it does happen to mls it does happen to central america I'll just look and see what kind of opportunity is there for me and what level will be there um and see if i could take it and maybe go to another part from there as opposed to just going there and staying there. Yeah, and I, I don't think it is late because even the last squad that they called up for the regular boys, they had players like Suleyem McCullough, who was on the, you know, more on the older side. You yeah, see, so you have guys that were called up or in their in their thirties. Um you understand me? So 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 it's it, it's it's not too late, I do understand, because there are probably other games that the team will play that you will get an opportunity to prove yourself. So yeah, I, I think you just continue to work hard, um, continue to do your clips, your videos, your highlights, and 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 gets this keep rocking up this the, the stats. I mean, your club may qualify for like the CFU club champion. There you go, which is CFU championship, which is a big deal, which is which is even more ex exposure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, I wasn't ruling out the whole Jamaica national team thing, but I definitely know that right now the only thing I can control is my performance on the field, the in the gardens, and see how far we can go. Because we do want to get this title out of the way, and then look what we can do on for next season with the CFU and maybe come back up for the year after. Yeah. All right. So, so do you think Arnett Gardens have what it takes this season, player management, coaching to to win the league? Yes, I definitely think so. I think the team is at a very competitive level, like I said, just for based on the training sessions that we've had. Um, from January, I think definitely during the transfer window, players were leaving, players were coming in. The, the change of pace, I think, because we are on a, a 15 game on meet run, although we know that those runs, it can always change. Um, I think since the loss against Dumbo Holding, the team definitely changed their mindset towards the uh, the league and how they want to play okay 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 all right so how i mean talk to me about you know um sir t got is my brethren big up coach t got coach eric big up yourself um dikai williams who is also part of the coaching staff there he's in the comment section he says it, it it's only a matter of time talking about you leaving and going to um yeah going away all right all right so so talk to me now um how good is the coaching staff and how um what, what are the things that you could say this is what i love about the coaching staff at arnett gardens well the first thing i'll say i love the whole balance there i think each of the coaching staff can um, complement each other um coach tigard can be a very direct person and then you have coach eric that can really um, explain things to the point where you probably say he goes into a lot of detail, but when you get what he's saying, you know, you really grasp and you really become a lot better as a player. Um, Coach Decoy, as you know, is a defensive player and back in the day, he was a great player. He has won four or five Premier League titles. So he definitely has a lot of experience, played overseas. Um, definitely one of the mentors that I've taken up um, in the team. So definitely I like how balanced they are and how they complement each other. Yeah. How how um how how who who which forward down there give you the hardest time? 
like when when you when you play in the squad match? Is it Fabian? Is it Marlon Allen? Is it you know Arboin? Who 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 give, is it? Um, Shea Simmons? Is it um Damar Deacon? Who gives you? Who gives you the hardest time uh, to, to pick up or, or no one? I don't know. Who gives you the hardest time? Are you fine to be the hardest one to, um, you know, to truck in training? I think the most difficult player to deal with when they're really playing well is Kimani Arborn. I think um, even from last year when I came in, his work rate is unreal. Like, he's really a quality, quality player. Um, I think, and when he got the national call up, I really wasn't surprised. I told him that when I came in, I was like, you're one of the best forwards in the league, just keep showing it. Honestly, you're doing very well. I think he contributed the most um, goals and assists for the team last year. So I think if he can get back to that level or even get to a higher level, this league is out of the way, but definitely in training, he's definitely a hard player to deal with. Your partner in crime is in the building, Earl Simpson. Earl. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm praying for you. That's in pretty the prayer emoji. But he he got substituted, right? Um, I mean, do you, I mean, like I said, that you guys have like, um, you you had so many. You had um, it's kind of funny, right? Because last last season it was you had Janai Cunningham, you had Joel Cunningham, you have yeah. Ezra Simpson. And Ezra and Simpson. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, this this Wolmerian, this very older Wolmerian, he said that you need to tell management that whatever we do, we do it to our best ability. Best of our ability. Agi Kodagis. That's the school matter of Wolmos. What? what, what uh, it means whatever we do, it we do it to our best ability? Whatever we do, we do it well, or to the best of our ability. Agi Kodagis. That's what okay. Wolmos. Okay, okay, Carlton. Look like you really did go Wolmos with you. <laughs> all right um orlando johnson who say goes by Alan. they says ask you about so five ball game <laughs> uh, that's a pick up ball game in maryland that we play when i go up to the states and um, they always play indoors so he knows what's what when i'm over there okay okay no i mean if if one of the questions we normally ask our panelist is, uh, well, I want if, if for the young persons who are listening now, you know, your teammates who are listening, maybe they 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 they, they weren't as blessed as you are to have the opportunity of going to college. But because honestly, Joel, there's a lot of people who don't realize that there are other players in our league that have degrees, so they always speak like the players are dunce, they can't read, they can't. You understand? That there's this notion that Jamaican footballers are uneducated, all right? You have totally defied that, blown that away. And not only that, but if, if you play for certain teams, if you play for certain teams, maybe you, you, you're uneducated. So like the, the Arnett Garden and Tivoli, like the bright people would probably play for like quote unquote, the Harbour Views and the teams that are not in, in quote, in, in, in sight of, in, in, in terms of garrison, right? I mean, yeah. how do you encourage some of your teammates that they shouldn't, like, let those things bother them? I mean, um, because people have that impression, like I said, about the league itself. Mm -hmm. and, and how does your image as a player help to change that so that the, 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 the Owen Hill from the JPL and the Chris Williams can look and say, this is a brand ambassador. This is Joel Cunningham. He plays for Arnett Gardens, and he, he's a graduate of Howard University um, with a master's. How important is that um, to help change this notion we have that our footballers in Jamaica are uneducated? How important is your role in that? Well, I think everyone definitely plays their role. I think not just the students, right? because we come to an understanding as we come into high school, those guys that got recruited, as you said, when you first started, oh, some players are bought for their yeah. school. We don't have to just think you come in and you just want to play football. It's a choice. You can say, I want to play football, but I want to be the best um, mathematics student as well, or the best student overall, because that was my motivation. I saw that stereotype that you're saying, 
that, that frustrated me actually and that motivated me to say, I'm going to outwork everybody else in the books just as so I'm working, overworking everybody else on the field. Because actually my lower six year, I topped two subjects, accounting and economics. Like that that's work rate. That's not just me saying I'm going to go to class and just get a grade. And I think the nowadays students, they always want to say, I passed a subject. Like that's what that's the problem. You're saying you want to pass a subject, you want to say you want to get a one. You want to say you want to get a distinction. Do you want that or do you want to just say you want to pass? So that's where it starts, the grassroots level. Then now when you come to the professional world, how do you um, portray professionalism? Not just the the book work to say I did, a, I had a degree or I did very well in high school, but how do you portray yourself on the field? Are you somebody that just races at the referee and do some blatant stuff that can get you off the field for like, those are the things that you can say fans use um, critiques. You, um, everybody, we can say pundits use the critique players, critique the league and say, this is a bush league. This is a, a league where everybody gets miserable and can't go to the next level. So I think those are things you have to look at and say, are, can we replace that? Can we take that out of the game? Can we take that out of local football to say, we are professionals. We're not going to react to every little thing. Those are the steps that we can take to say, all right, we're going to deal with that and our team is going to get better. We're going to look a lot better. We're going to look more marketable. And that's where football is going to progress from. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is that I'm saying these things now because this is what I, I used to experience. So people, um, even when I was in university, because I used to tackle hard sometimes, people would say, yo, man, don't, you know, them baller, you can't read, you know, because, you know, if, if, if they see you display any sort of aggression in terms of your play, the assumption is that you're uneducated. You, you, you don't know. It. When they make a mistake, you don't. Sometimes it's amazing the people who are telling you that. <laughs> they probably can't even spell the word "duds," but I'm just saying there is that there is that thing that comes from people that they just assume that because you're a footballer, if you do something stupid on the field, it yeah. is an estimation of your education. But then the other thing is that do you do you also encourage some of your teammates to say, "Listen, I mean, you should you should consider going back to school, right? You should consider getting a professional career just." outside of football just in case this doesn't work or are they just all committed to the football and this is it um football are bust no i think definitely as you said as i've spoken to many of the players especially the younger ones um under 20 years old yeah. who are basically one of the top players in the schoolboy football um because we do know that the opportunity, like I said, for me, the opportunity really came because I went to the U.S. and I went to college, as opposed to me just going straight from high school to going to the Jamaican Premier League. And some of these guys definitely have the quality and the academic level to get to college. So it's just a matter of whether they want to and whether the, the support system is there. Because we can say that, hey, the opportunity is there, but if the closest five people, five closest people to them are saying, go straight pro, you know, like they're more likely to listen to them. So I think that's where the real problem is, where where are the closest people talking to the players and do they respect someone like myself or someone who else, someone else who really trying to encourage them to go another route as opposed to just going straight pro. All right. Bijin Ellis says, yeah. coach Abijan. Yeah, Bijan. Ellis says, Bijan says, coach Joel. You, you can coach, or you just, or you just see what T got and Eric and Dikai Williams. You just, you just, you just go to training and just do the same drill them. You understand? We just say, hey, right. come on, let's. We, this is what we did at training yesterday. Now, come on, man, let's do that right now. Or do you actually coach, coach, coach? <laughs> A little bit of both. I think I definitely, um, I've been inspired by the coaches at Arnold Gardens to try some of the drills, some of the exercises, some of the talks that they've had. And bring them into the mentorship program like i said i was talking about and with the jamaican premier league team that we work with but um i've actually just started my coaching license u.s coaching license um so i'm working on that right now to officially be a coach oh, okay so you're doing the u.s license yes i am 
Not the Jamaica one. Very interesting. Why not? I'm just asking. Why not the Jamaica one? Um, <laughs> you can play the fifth, you know. <laughs> just kidding. I have my reasons. I have my reasons. Yeah, let's see okay. That. okay, okay. I get a feeling that one day you probably want to go to Howard and coach. You know what I mean? So I've actually it. thought about that. I've actually thought about that. Could yeah, be. yeah. Yeah. But, I mean... um. Like I said, what you said about the players and stuff is what, like Dr. Dan said, Damian Lowe said the same thing, Andy Williams said the same thing, Amal Knight said the same thing, you know, um, that the, the stereotype has to has to change. You know, I always said when I was playing football that people don't even know you. They see you play football and then walk, you're walking with your, 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 your boots in your hand and you're coming from training and it may be dirty and you're sweaty. And the first thing, them just assume that you probably can't read and you can't write. So I always try to, to do that, to say to players, listen, I mean, just, just, just you never had the opportunity to do school when you were in school because everybody you know, was trying to tell her to play football. So now play football to go to school. Because when you were in school, you were in school to play football. So now that you're in football, go to school. Because you control that. So I always say that to them. If people brought you to school for football, when you get to football, go to school. Just reverse it. I agree. I agree. And, and then, also, I think we have to think about the fact that Nowadays, it's not just about going to school. It's getting an education. You don't have to even go to traditional school route. You can take classes. You can do um, practical school, traditional, um, what they call it, trade school, stuff like that. Um, just yeah. learn things that really can help you be marketable outside of the game. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you are going to what they call now the football war of all times, right? And you need to pick your six aside, and you have to use a goalkeeper, and you have to play. These are players that you have played with throughout your career. Who are the six, the five players that join you to go to football war because you need to win? All right. I would say I'll have my goalkeeper, Casey Hersey. I played with at Howard University, top class goalkeeper playing in Germany. Well, you, can't, you can't go back training. You can't go back training tomorrow, you know, because you know, um, when Eric Edwards here, this will go on, you know. But go Eric, ahead. Eric is a great goalkeeper. When Casey, Casey was a quality yeah. player. Um, defense line, I think Tazio Gilpin, a player that I played with um, at Woolmans. He actually was from Casey and then came to Woolmans. Very, very. Solid defender. He said six. I'm I'm in the six, sir. So so you so you and Gilpin, you play on the left side of defense, he plays on the right. You have a goalkeeper, right? Yeah. So you have three more players to add to your team. All right. Um I would say think about that now. I'm going to the attack. I'll go with Demar Rose. Demar Rose. Playing at Harborview now, but at Wilmers again. I think Wilmers definitely enjoyed the game there. Um, Xavier Rajpal at Howard University. Um, this kid called Tote that I played with in Iceland. It's, it's diamond like. Man, I don't, I don't know how you're going to go back at training tomorrow now because yeah, not one on it guard want to make a team in a bro. Okay. No, worry, man. I'm, I'm an honest part, man. I'm an honest no, man. No, but to finish, you just gave the team. No, it's you? a five more. Yeah. Eh? Mm -hmm. Five. So, so let's mean? go. You said the goalkeeper. Yeah. You have um the centre back that you played with, um Gilpin, mm -hmm. and you. You said Demario Rose. Yeah. You said Tot. Um. Tote. Is Tote. Mm -hmm. You said, um, oh geez, what's the other funny name person you said? Demar. Raj Paul. Raj Paul, six, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, them. Quality. Yeah, yeah. So so nobody knows. <laughs> I good enough. No, I decided good enough, but them I time there. Yeah, Dickai Williams is here. And All right. Marlon Martin is here. And then Errol Simpson is here. Gerald yeah. is here. <laughs> And 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 see Charlie Charlie is saying that you don't put Joel Hyde in the six aside. You don't put Jail Hyde in your six aside. 
Jair Lear, Lear was. Okay, not, 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 not the six, not the six, not the six. <laughs> what do you think? For, do you me, think? for yeah. me, all right, see how I see it. I, if I have ball players, we can score some tap ins. That's how I grew up in playing football. I love the passing and stuff. Jair is definitely a great goal scorer. Definitely a great goal scorer, but not the top six. And uh, these, uh, the thing is, you know, with players like those who basically are watching, most of them only see me at the local level. But some of the guys that I've seen like playing overseas is really something else. I, I will make it seven aside just because you're in there, so you get one more spot to squeeze somebody on. So you have two defenders. Problem, you problem, have, you know. you have, yeah, a goalkeeper, two midfielders, and a forward. So you get to, yeah. yeah forward. I'll think about that one. Uh, Ebo BC. BC you want still, still call somebody. <laughs> yeah. You want still call. Hey, we try to squeeze in an added player. I don't want the one. <laughs> All right. But, but that's your team. But what would be advice, you know, to all the young persons listening out there, all the young men who play the sport of football, you understand me? I mean, there, there are many things we can talk about, Joel. We could talk about just the, 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 the income from football in Jamaica. It's not worth it if, if you want to live a good life and t be able to provide and take care of your family. Clubs are, are, can't afford to pay the kind of salaries in Europe. Right, so but the players still have to come out. They have to, you know, we don't have the, the, the best practices in terms of nutrition. We, we don't have the best gym facilities, not all clubs, but some have it. So the pathway is very difficult. Um, the, at the grassroots levels, the coaching is not ideal. The surfaces are not ideal. But some of these guys really believe that they can make it big time. Now to, to the young men listening and the young ladies listening, um, what are some of the, like, what, what are the, the, the five, maybe you have three, five to, three to five key things that you'll say, words, phrases, you'd say to them to, to, to keep them inspired, to keep on believing, to keep on trying and to make it um, and, and, and to become successful. What would be your advice to them? You do mentorship. They are listening to you now. What would you say to them? think about that so for me the, the i guess you can say the motto with my mentorship is be the change show the change i think that's really something i would encourage everyone to do we can't necessarily um start a new chapter right away but we can change into a new leaf we can always come and say we can do something small and it turns out to be something big because we always thinking, hey, Jamaica is going to have our bad fields today, and by next week we're going to have all these great fields if we put a lot of money into it. I don't think that's how it works. I don't think that would ever work that way. It has to be we make us making a small change right now. We're going to say, all right, we'll try and fix up this one field one at a time. We we'll try to say, all right, we're going to try and help one student one at a time. That's how we can definitely create a network that can change the whole concept of we are going to be a country and I guess a competitive country at the educational level and at the sports level. Because I think that's where we really as you know, you know, you know when they talk about crabbing a barrel mentality that really yeah. happened in the Caribbean, I think we need to take that out. I think you have to really think we can change our entire ecosystem, the group, everybody that wants to be together, and then we can change everything after that. <laughs> our, our said Joel must listen a lot of Joel Osteen. <laughs> no, no. uh, but but <laughs> I, I hear a lot of that, but talk to the young players now. I mean, just, just give those the young players a word of inspiration, you understand me? Um, that, that next young, young kid, out there that's listening what what do you say to them joel i, I hear the changes we need to make on a, on, a, on a big scale but that 16 year old that is watching this that 15 year old that 14 year old that is listening to this that that father who is sitting beside his son um listening to this right now you know um feel like they are not going to make it yeah 
feel like the, the struggle is real, boy. I don't think me, boy, every day, they, boy, I don't me, me think I'm going to take a Jamaica. Like, oh, you know, yeah. You know, wh- what, what do you tell them? What are some of the things, like, what are some of the things that you did as an individual so that you can perform at the level you are performing, that you can say to them, listen, you, you need to do these things. Maybe you need to get up and train and look harder, eat better, sleep more. What are some of the advices or the advice that you give to um, the young players listening and watching now? I mean, as you said, um, all that comes down to discipline. I don't know if you've ever listened to a video from um, Kobe Bryant or one of those other athletes that's really put a stamp on the sport. It, everything starts with you having a level of discipline that nobody can compare to that. Um, so that's something that you can control and that will definitely lead to something happening. Might not be today, might not be next week, but definitely in the future. Um, and the faith that it will happen will also need to be there because you can't just say by next year I'm going to stop and maybe a week after you stop, the opportunity comes in and you're not prepared for that because you probably stop and say, all right, I'm going to shut down and stop playing. Because for me, it definitely happened um, after I came back from Iceland where the opportunity definitely came back, but I wasn't prepared for those other opportunities. I didn't get to go at those other times. So I'd say for the young players, um, create a level of discipline that's like where opportunities will be drawn towards you because it will come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Dan is giving you your words that you should use. I don't know. He's saying consistency, accountability, discipline. Yeah. True talk, bro. Well said. Well said. Listen, and, and I mean, like again, and like, like I said before, I am glad that you came and I know you came from training and, um, and so you're, you're probably a little tired. I'm going to allow you to get some rest, but I really appreciate you coming on. And for me, this was very, very important because I, I knew, um, yeah, see, you see, no, me I tell you, you see, when I'm asking, what about CFAS? Yeah, what about Parker Blocks? You, might say, you, might say, you know, CFAS can't make you... Like I said, not everybody would know the players are played overseas. So I'll just leave it at that. Robert, you love the man. I the man team. When you when you are the program, Robert, you name your team. The man the man name your team. But um it, it's so important because it it's a stereotype, I think, in the league. And I think and I think more people, I think this is good for the league, and more people need to hear and see persons like you. People don't know this as well, that Demar Rose also has his degree. I think he completed his studies as well, if memory serves me right. right? And, but people don't know that. But yet again, you look at him unassuming and stuff, and you think like maybe these guys are... You can't. But a lot of the Wolmerian that have played in the league have done well it, educationally, including even Amal Knight. So when you go through and you look at that, you see that there's a consistent pattern of some of the players. Um, when you go to certain schools as well, I will also add to that, that a lot of the players that go to schools, like um, certain schools end up leaving with subjects and they go on to college and all of that. And the ones who turn pro, like even Jail Hyde, he still did school and did his athletics as well. So he didn't. So, so that is important. Uh, I spoke to two other kids from Mannings who went on the trip to uh, Holland with Eric Redamake and his academy. And I mean, one, one has nine subjects already. The other one has four and he's going to do five more he, he, or six more to, so that he can have 10. And, and that's what they want to hear from our young sportsmen, that they are, they are not just footballers, but they are highly intelligent. And not, y- y- there is a plan B. I don't have to play football because I have an education that can also um, bring in even more income than football. And so I'm glad that people have seen this and, and more of the players like you need to come out and speak so people can see the different face of the league. Because what they see, Joel, a lot of people don't see you. They see the exciting stuff sometimes, and they also see the elbow. They see the, 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 the punch. They see the man kick the man. They see the, the, they see the man cussing the bad word. They see the man who with him shorts down, and them say, boy, this league, this league. But they don't see you. They don't see the other people who operate in a, at a certain level. 
and uh, so more guys like you, you need to encourage them that they need to they need to come and talk and share their story so that can pe- so that many people out there can see the other side of the league because this assumption that you're not bright makes no sense. You don't assume that by looking at a person. You, you express yourself quite eloquently. You, you understand me? Um, and you can tell by you're not the fastest player, but I'm telling you, you defend very smart. Although I, I know that my team has a plan for Arnett Gardeners. Which team is that? <laughs> that shall remain a mystery. All right. Come on, come on videos and uh, no man, you, you know you know what is funny, right? So, Arnett Gardens have always been my team, you know, because like uh, back in the days, I used to watch a lot of rivalry between Reno and Arnett. So when Reno not around, then I will just go for Arnett, all right? Because every time you have Belly Dias and Denton Shedden and Cottrell King and you know those guys, I don't even know some of those guys, Byron Earl. Big Ed Eugene Williams, I remember that, you know, so I remember, uh, yeah, all of those guys. I, in fact, I've interviewed them, but I've been sent on now, so I support, you know, the best team in blue right now in Jamaica. Unpleasant. All right, well. <laughs> All right. But I know that, I know, <laughs> like, listen, the last game at Jackson, it would have been a good one if it never rained, you know, and I think the crowd have been, yeah. There, there was a little drizzle out there, but that game would have been a very, very intense game, you know, because I know T got left one present, and I think, like, you know, T got has a score to settle with them, but Tapa has a score to settle with Arnett Garnet as well. So it will be it will be very, very interesting. The other thing is that, you know what is funny? That you generally don't see players move between those clubs. You rarely see Arnett Garnet players coming to Mount Pleasant, or players who are at Mount Pleasant go to Arnett Garden. At the senior level, I think they have Shandy James who was at Arnett though, and um, Donovan Sigri as well. And the goalkeeper, I think, who used to go to Arnett, Shaquille. Shaquille, uh, Shaquille. Are, Shaquille. are coming actually, and Chambers is from Arnett as well. Shaquille, Shaquille was on loan from Mount Pleasant he was on to loan? Arnett, I think. I don't, I don't even know, yeah, what and yeah. the other goalkeeper, Chambers. Yeah, you have a next old mayor and big up Neil. Yeah, big up man from the Hero Circle. All right, sir. There you go. All right. Yeah, but um, I always tell people that it is 1738 that is the oldest school, you know. Understand me. Man in the school. And then you have the Wolmers. And the Wolmers always try to trick people like they are the first school in this side of the world, you know. But it's actually man in the people from 1738. Don't let don't let the Wolmerians tell you otherwise. Yeah. But Joel, <laughs> again, thank you so much for coming on. Anything um you want to say in, in closing? Um anyone you want to thank, um, you know, anyone you want to heal up in closing as we, we, we wrap this up so you can get some rest. I mean, definitely want to shout out my family. I think they've definitely been the support system that came positive throughout the years. And it's been up and down. Um, I want to shout out the entire Arne Gardens family, you know, that we have four more games that we want to get out of the way and get the wins and get the title. So uh, how, many more, how many more games you have? Yeah, four more games, four more finals. We'll beating Tivoli, two semifinals, and then the finals. So those are the four games we have left in the season. And we're going to take every game and get our wins and work on our clean sheets as well. So. Everybody, are you <laughs> <laughs> ready for that? Just saying that there. Hey, we unseen. The, these are the things like Marlon Martin are unseen, like for you know. I understand me. Once yeah. I have four more games, you have a game in you know, the people on Sunday, right? Yeah. So that's one. So after that, you have the semi final. The, the semi final is his two legs. Yes, so that's, sir. yeah. And so he's final. saying that he's going to be in the finals. All right. Well, obviously. It must be a red and blue finals then. Uh, we'll see. We'll see because, we'll see. no, you know, you know what is funny? You know that you and Mount Pleasant cannot meet in the final, though. I think they can. Because how the bracket is, if they win, if they win, you guys meet in the semifinals. 
So how how I have it is if they come it, second, we can meet them in the finals. If they come sec if they come second. Yeah. yeah second. But if, I think they're going to finish third and Cavaliers second and you first. Which means yeah. that it will be Cavaliers playing like Harborview, maybe. And and Mount Pleasant Arnett Gardeners. Unless yeah. somebody upset one of those. Okay. Yeah. That will, be, it all, it will <laughs> that will be a good semi-final period. But there is humble lion because Coach Andrew Price can write them off. There is the defending finalists from last season as well. Don't be holding. And there is Waterhouse trying their best to get in the top six. So we shall see. And 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 Harborview, you guys really outplayed Harborview in the last game. I'm telling you, love that la um that goal by Guthrie. Um, well worked, lots of passing, um, and he just side foot it into the back of the net. So, so who is your? So let's give you a top five. Who is your favorite player of football? At professional level. Yeah. Um. Honestly, in his prime, I I love to watch Sergio Ramos. I think definitely a complete player. Man, um, love the red card magnet, yeah, man. And that's the thing, like it's ironic because I don't really get cards like that. So definitely love watching him play. It's aggression, leadership, and definitely a comp complete player. Um, top five. Attacking, I like to watch Kevin De Bruyne uh, for Man City. Reads the game on a different level. Um I can say now. Tony Cruz. I do love to watch midfielders play. I have to watch see them control the game. Um I have Ronaldo and Messi, two top players of our generation and probably of all time. Um, that four or five. Yeah, no man, that's fine. Which club team you support? I don't have a team. I don't have a team. Oh, you don't support any club team? No, I don't support a team. Growing up, I used to watch um, Garrett Bale a lot based on his positioning. Um, so I'd watch Tottenham and Real Madrid. But I was not say it. I wouldn't say I would support that team. If not football, which other sport you'll be playing? Hmm. Never thought about that. Maybe basketball. Both my brothers like the sport, so probably would do that. All right. If there's one foul in the JPL that you don't like to face, because he always give you a warm time. Who is that foul? This right. Nine from a nine, a nine, a nine. No, the one they'll call a whole Marian, you know. <laughs> I, I, I remember because like even when I was at Diego Prep we would face Heidel and he was just like scoring 10 goals against us so on that time I was like this guy is oh, okay. yeah 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 all right Joel thank you so so much for coming on man it was a pleasure speaking with you um, um continue to do well um we will see each other you understand me? Maybe at the semis, maybe at the finals. I don't know yet. <laughs> they can come to the award ceremony. Huh? Come to the award ceremony. <laughs> that that is true. That is true. I may be receiving. I may be receiving an award for being the prophet that was right. <laughs> 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 well thank you so much for coming on all the best for the rest of the season hope you stay in good health hope the team continues to do well again I will say that of all the teams in the league Arnett is the most consistent and are playing the best brand of football and they always do that they score lots of goals they don't concede a lot makes a lot of passes and they have so many options to call on um, and so again all the best for the rest of the season and I hope that as you continue to play well, you know, um, yeah, a door will open, as you said, for you to do, be in mainland Europe or even a looking at our national team. So, Joel Cunningham, um, thank you so, so much for being a part of the show. All the best in your other endeavors, including your mentorship program. If you ever don't decide and you need someone to help with anything, man, give me a shout. You understand me? Whatever I can do. I do a lot of that home and abroad. So, you know, once I'm available, um, you know, yeah. And um, your, your cousin, she knows that as well, that she can link me up and let me know um, how I can do that. All right, so thanks again. Get some rest, because I know you had a long day of training. All right? Thanks, Monix. Thanks again for inviting me. Have a great yeah, night. Man. Same to you. All right.
All right, so people, there you go. That is Joel Cunningham for you. I mean, I, I'm so happy that you all got to hear this. And, and when I do these things, I always say, please, share them with some others because the, the, the notion and the stereotype that is out there, we're trying to dispel it. We're helping people to realize that there are young men who play in our league who are highly, highly educated, right? And they don't have to do this, but they do it because they love the sport. They have other options, but they choose this. And so I'm, I'm grateful that, and it is not just his talk. You can see it in his demeanor when his team play. You don't see him as one arguing with the referee or arguing with teammates. You see that. You, you watch the games, you see it. And normally, these are the players who get overlooked because it's not about flair and, and, and charisma. It's about doing the right thing, saying the right thing, and living the right way. And that's the example of Joel Cunningham. Again, find a youngster in your community, at your school, at your club. Let them listen. The story. He had to work to get where he's at. Maybe if you just work a little harder, you would go a little higher. I am Manningsman. This has been I Am Sure Sports. And as usual, whenever we get to the end of our show, we say we are over and we are O-U-T out of here. Watch your people, watch your, me get my jersey already. So you know what I'm saying? Ali Cup? Oh, Ali Cup is not a Fally Cup. August 12 and 13, 137 Mountain View Avenue. You know what I'm saying? headquarters that. That one you go loud, it's like a pro, so come bust the crowd and the club, cause we're gonna have fun. Yo, hear me now. If you now do the right thing, you are do the wrong thing. From you are do the wrong thing, you are go get a spanking. Can't power with Fuba, Sambo, now they're the ranking. Chris, if you push the boy, them off of the gully banking. Rise up in the morning, Father God, me off to thank him. Praise the most high before me get me near cranking. It's all about Ali Cup, August 12 and 13. Deliverance full Darcy to the fullest. So be there. Remember, Aggie Animal, striving for excellence. Mad. <laughs>